Hi everyone, in this video I want to walk through a couple of different examples on how to write electron configuration and use the periodic table to help you with that. So in the previous video I had walked through all the elements in the second period and write their electron configuration and now we're going to do a couple of elements that are not as easy to work through. So one of which is going to be our transition metal. So let's pick iron as an example. To determine electron configuration, the first thing is you have to determine how many electrons you have. If you go to the periodic table, you see that iron has an atomic number of 26. That's the number of protons, but in the iron atom, that's also going to be the number of electrons. So iron has 26 electrons. And to to write its electron configuration, we're going to have to go back to our Aufbau diagram. And what you want to be able to do is be remember this diagram or be able to reproduce it. The way you do that is you would start with all your s orbitals, and there's seven of them. And then you go with your p orbital from two to six. And then we have the d orbitals which goes from 3 to 6. Then we have our f orbital, which is just 4 and 5. And the way you go about using this diagram is you start reading from 1s and then followed by 2s. And then it's a diagonal, so you go 2p and 3s, 3p, 4s, 3d, 4p, 5s, and so on. So with the 26 electrons, we're going to start with our 1s. And remember, each orbital has a maximum of 2, so we're going to put 1s2, 2s, also going to be 2. And then the next one will be 2p. Remember that p orbitals have three orbitals attached to each other, and each orbital can have two, so there's a maximum of six for p orbitals, so 2p6. So far we have 10 electrons assigned. We need another 16, so we go to the next one, which is 3s, and that can have a maximum of two. After 3s, we go to 3p. Any p orbitals is gonna have a maximum of six, so we'll put six here again. And then we go to 4s, and 4s is two as well. So that's another 10 electrons. Now we have six more to place. The next orbital we're supposed to place this is 3d. Well, 3d, d orbitals can have a maximum of 10 electrons total because there's five of them attached together. But right now we only have six electrons to place in there. So we're gonna say 3d6. In terms of its orbital diagram, we can draw it out as follows. It's a 1s2, 2s2. The 2p has three orbitals with six electrons in them. So we're gonna draw it that way. The 3s, 3p, same thing, six electrons, 4s, and our 3d is going to have five orbitals attached to each other, but only six electrons being filled in. And remember, the way we fill this is we go one at a time first. So that's five. And then that's the sixth one. So this is your 3d. Now, I want to give you one more way of writing this electron configuration. And this is what we call the noble gas shortcut. We looked at what is the noble gas that comes before our element. So if we look at the periodic table, the noble gas that comes before iron is argon. So we see that there is 18 electrons in argon. That would be from the 1s orbital all the way to the 3p. There's 18 electrons in that. So what we can do is replace those and just say that that's the same as the argon configuration. So we would write argon in brackets and then 4s2 and 3d6. So this would be what we call a noble gas shortcut, which is uh, just another way to write the configuration of an element. Let me do another example now with an ion. So let's say we have the selenide ion, Se2 minus in this case. So the same thing as before, we would go to the periodic table to figure out how many electrons selenium has. And selenium has 34 electrons, but we have the selenide ion, which is two more electrons than the atom. So the ion will then have 36 electrons. Now, what we're gonna do is we're going to write the electron configuration starting from the beginning. So 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. And again, this is done by going through that Aufbau diagram that we had generated right here. And if you do this often enough, you'll start remembering the sequence 3s2, 3p6, 4s2. And then our 3d, remember, has a maximum of 10. In this case, we have 36 electrons, so we can put all 10 in there. Right now, if you count this out, you have 10 electrons here, another 10, another 10. So you have 30, you have six more to place, and you have 4p being the next 
orbital to place the electron and p of course can have a maximum of six we have exactly six so we put six in there so that's the configuration of the selenite ion if you want to do it as your orbital diagram you would just have to draw all of them and you can see that that's what it would look like for the orbital diagram. Now, as it happens, if you want to use the noble gas, the selenite ion is exactly the configuration of the noble gas krypton. So another way to write that is just that. That would be the noble gas shortcut for selenite. So those are two examples of electron configuration. A couple other questions associated with that is to figure out what the valence shell is and the number of valence electrons. So let's go back to the configuration to do that. Remember that if you want the valence electrons, you first have to figure out the valence shell. The valence shell is always the outermost shell. So what you need to do is find the largest shell you have. In this case, for iron, the largest shell is shell number four. So we would say that the number of valence electron is two electrons. The valence shell is shell number four. Now, as it happens in reality, the 4s and the 3d orbitals are fairly close together. So it turns out that with iron, the 4s electrons can be lost first when iron forms iron ions, but the 3d electrons, they are about the same in terms of stability. So that's just the reason why you can see iron forming Fe2+, meaning it will lose the two electrons from the 4s, but iron can also form Fe3+, because it could also lose one of these electrons from the 3d after the 4s is lost. If you go to the selenite ion, we're going to look for the largest or the outermost shell that will be shell number four shell number four contains two different orbitals 4s and 4p and so there's a total of eight valence electron and the valence shell is number four fourth shell okay